Hey, I'm Bob and I like to make stuff. Today we're gonna make a leather sheath for a machete. Not too long ago, I made a machete. This is my first knife and it turned out pretty good, but now I need to make a sheath to put it in. Now I know there's some questions around making a leather sheath for a knife about it holding moisture or dulling the blade. That's not stuff I'm really worried about right now. Instead, I just wanna learn how to do it. I want this sheath to hang on my belt, but not just straight down. I actually want it to go a little bit at an angle so that I can pull it out easily and put it back. And also if it's at an angle, it's not gonna get in the way of my leg. So the first thing we need to do here is make a pattern and that'll help us figure out how to do the belt loop at the angle it needs to be so it'll hang how I want it to hang. I'm trying to figure out this piece right here because this is going to sit on the belt. So the belt is going to run right along through here and I want the part that loops over the belt to be really wide to help counteract the weight of the knife and hold it at that angle. But I want it to kind of taper out to where the belt is gonna run through like this and then have a matching piece that can fold over and reattach. So the loop will start right here and kind of come out at an angle and then end right here at the belt. Not sure if that makes sense, but I'm trying to work it out and once I get it cut out, I'll show you what I mean. All right, so I got a really simple pattern here that I think might work. We'll have to try it out. But I think this line is gonna fit on the belt so it has a nice big footprint. Um, and then the blade should be able to drop down pretty much straight like this. And this is one of the advantages of this shape of machete is it doesn't have to work around any curves. But theoretically, it's gonna wanna try to kick itself flat. But I think with a big foot up here on the belt, it should counteract that a little bit. This is a pretty good angle though, because I can still pull the blade out easily and I don't have to pull it straight up or anything that's really super awkward. So I think we'll probably go with a variation of this, kind of see what it looks like in the leather. I'm continuing to work on this pattern a little bit, trying to add some of the details that I think that I want to have. One is going to be a couple of snaps here on this belt loop so that you can actually put it on without having to take your belt off. You can drape this over and then snap it together. And then on the outside face, rather than just leaving this blank, I wanna make a few little pockets. One for maybe a sharpening stone, uh, maybe for little medical things or some fire starting kits. I don't know exactly what I wanna put on there, but just a few things that might be handy when you're out in the woods. Now that I've got the template all done, I've got it laid out here on the leather. And since it's one piece that's folded over, I had to make sure that I laid it on here correctly so that the outside of the template is the outside of the leather. I'm gonna trace that out with a Sharpie and cut it out. I've swapped out the tip of this particular tool, so instead of a marking tip, it's actually gonna cut a little bit, and this'll help me thin out some of the material right where the fold needs to be right on the side. I'm gonna do that up against the straight edge. So this worked out pretty well, and this is good for a kind of a clean fold, but up here on the belt loop, I actually want this to be more of a loop and less of a fold. So I'm gonna use this skiver to actually just remove some of the leather surface. Here it'll thin out this area that needs to be the loop, and that should make it easier to kind of fold over. Now that I've got this in place, I'm gonna roughly outline it. And basically this line will be hidden on the inside of the sheath, but it shows me where I need to put the cement. So I make sure to put the contact cement on this surface and not in here where the knife's gonna end up going. Now 
Now we're gonna fold this around and mold it to the blade. So I've got the blade wrapped up in some wax paper, and so that should help protect the surface a little bit from rust. But first, I gotta get this wet, and then once we get this wet, I'm gonna clamp some pieces of wood around it to make sure that it's pushed down really nice and tight. We'll add some clamps on the outside and let it dry so that it can form around the blade. We've got this thing out of the clamps now. It's looking really good. Now the next step is to cut a thinner piece of leather that's gonna go on this section, on the inside of the belt loop. And that's because when this is folded over, there's still a little gap here. And so what I wanna do is put a different material here, thinner piece of leather, but dye it black. So it's gonna be a lot darker, it'll look nice, and it'll go down into the inside of the sheath. Now the other thing is that we're gonna add some stuff to the outside. Now I'm not a survivalist at all, but I think it would be kinda of cool to have a sharpening stone with you all the time. So I'm gonna put that there and then make a little formed pocket on the outside that it can come in and out of. Since we're doing that, we may as well do another one up here. These are little fire starter sticks. They're magnesium rods that you can scrape and they create sparks so that you could start a little fire. These are about the same size as the sharpening stone. So it'd be kind of cool to have a pocket for them and then a pocket down here. So let's cut those out and form them. These worked out really well. The forming is really nice here. Now the next step is to trim these down so that there's a uniform kind of border around the outside of them. And then once we get those cut and figure out where they're gonna go, go ahead and dye all this stuff the same color and then glue these on. I'm really excited that, again, this video is sponsored by Weaver Leather. All of the tools that I'm using, the leather that I'm using, the dyes, everything comes from Weaver. They've got an awesome online store that sells all of that stuff, but their website also has a bunch of instructional videos to help you start as a beginner and go all the way up through some really complex, really beautiful leather projects. If you're interested in leathercraft at all, Weaver is the place that you need to go. They'll have everything you need, and it's a group of awesome people. Go check them out. That dye is just about all dried up, but it's good enough for us to keep working. So I put some barge, which is a contact cement, on this side, this is the black piece, and on the inside of this top section. Now once you put the barge on two surfaces, you let it dry, and then it will stick together and make a really tight bond. So I'm gonna put these together, then we're gonna do the exact same thing for the little pockets on the outside. Now you gotta be pretty careful when you put these together because once they're stuck, you can't really take them back apart. I intentionally didn't worry about lining these up because the whole thing is gonna get trimmed down so the two pieces will line up perfectly after that.
All right, this one turned out great. It's nice and tight, it stays in there. This one's a little bit looser than I would like, but I think it'll still work just because of gravity. One thing I wanted to point out about the barge, the extra that I put down that didn't get covered is kind of like rubber cement. So you can just kind of roll it up with your finger and it'll come right off. Now we're gonna do some hand stitching on these pockets. I've got this cutting mat and I'm putting it in between these pieces so I don't puncture through and hit the back of the sheath. I'm gonna use these things to hammer in some holes and we'll do some hand stitching. I've got all these holes in for both of these little pockets so we're gonna take the things out, put it in the stitching pony and stitch these up by hand. I started with the thread on the top of the pocket and then worked my way down and now I'm at a point where both of the strings are coming out on the inside of the sheath. This gives me a chance to tie them off and glue them down. Then I can do the same thing starting at the other side so both of my knots are going to be glued down on the inside of this and you won't see them from the outside. So I'm going to go ahead and tie this one down and then do the other one and this pocket the exact same way. Now that this is all barged up and trimmed, I'm gonna go ahead and put in the stitching. But to do that, I'm gonna use this edging tool. You put this edge up against the outside and then drag it along and it makes an offset line from the outside edge and then that becomes where you can stitch to. I finished up all the stitching on this and I'm just gonna tie it off. But one thing I'm gonna have to do next is go back with some of the dye that I used earlier and dye this edge. After I trim this down, this is now undyed leather. So I'm gonna go back and re-dye that, let that dry, and then we're gonna burnish all this to make it smooth. That dye is all dried, so the next step is to seal up the cut edge, and we're gonna use some gum tragacanth for that. You put it on with a dauber, and then you burnish it with a burnishing tool. Now this has a really nice uh, polished edge. The next thing is to put on a layer of atom wax on the whole thing. That's going to make it look really cool and protect the leather more. Then the absolute last step will be to put on the snaps for the belt loop. This thing is almost done. The last step is to put on a couple of snaps here and this is a really easy process. We're gonna mark where those holes need to be, cut the holes, and then transfer through this top section to the back section, cut holes there, and then we'll put in the snaps. And with this punch, you can actually rotate this around to get different size holes. I've got it set to what I need for the snaps that I have, so I'm just gonna line it up over that little mark that I made and squeeze and it punches it out.
Over the weekend, Weaver sent me a whole box of stuff, including these snaps, which are really awesome. They look really nice and are gonna look great on this leather. The snaps come with, obviously, the front and the back, and then each one of those comes with two pieces. So this collar will get dropped down on there, and then you'll flatten out that post, and it makes the snap come together as a single piece. And then you do the same thing for these other two, and that gives you the front and the back of the snaps. Now you can do this by hand or with some hand tools, but Weaver also sent another really awesome tool. This is the Little Wonder, which they sent, and it's great for setting snaps or grommets, anything that you can put in this little area. And then you just pull this lever. It doesn't take any pressure at all because of this cam, and it just mashes the snap or the rivet down inside the leather. It comes with two different sets for the snaps, uh, one set for the top, one set for the bottom. Let's put those on and I'll show you. This machine is super easy to use, but it does come with a manual which tells you all of the dies and all of the stuff that you need to put in different snaps and different grommets and different crystals and all sorts of stuff that you can put in leather. I probably could have spaced these out a little bit more, but I've never done this, so I'm pretty happy with it. I'm gonna test this on my belt just to make sure that it fits all right. I know I say this a lot, but I'm actually really happy with how this thing turned out. It looks way better than I expected. Big thanks to Weaver for sponsoring this video. If you're interested in Leathercraft at all, they've got all the tools and materials that you're gonna need. Be sure to go check them out. If this gave you some ideas for a future project for yourself, I would love to hear about it down in the comments. We've also got tons of other types of projects that you may wanna check out, and if you're not subscribed, go ahead and do that and hit the bell so you get notified every time we put up a new video. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Gum track a can't dauber burnish. Gum track a thing garber garbage. I'm very happy with it. Big thanks to Weavers. I don't know. Doing the thing. How do I do this? Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Half a milkshake.